Hi everyone, this is uh, an energy update video for my energy generation and consumption for the month of April 2020. There's been plenty of introduction to my configuration in previous videos, so let's get straight into the data. April 2020 has been an absolutely incredible month with several records for generation and import and export etc. So um, let's go through some of the details. 602.7 kilowatt hours generated from our initial array that's a 3.6 kilowatt array of solar panels on our solace inverter and that compares really well to last year in fact last year the highest month of generation we had was in august at 555.4 kilowatt hours so basically april 2020 has been a record month for generation Looking at the detail of the daily generation of just that first array, you can really see why it's been such a good month. There are so few days of under 10 kilowatt hours of generation, just one, two, three, four, five, five days out of 30 where we had under 10 kilowatt hours. The rest were exceptional. The best generation on this uh, initial array that we had last year was 28.8 kilowatt hours in May last year. So to see 28.6 in April, was absolutely exceptional. Wasn't a record on that day, but obviously the days are shorter in April than they are May. Looking at our second array, the two kilowatt solar edge array, we only generated 341.88 kilowatt hours. Obviously it's a smaller array, but the profile was exactly the same. As you might expect, the panels are in the same position. The best day's generation on this array was obviously the same day, and we achieved 16.38 kilowatt hours on this 2 kilowatt array. So in total, 44.6, 44.7 was the maximum I've seen on the combination of these two arrays. Combining the data onto this graph, we can see that on quite a few days, over a third of the month, we achieved over 40 kilowatt hours of generation. And the peak day was actually 44.98 kilowatt hours in total. Between the two arrays, that's an incredible 944 kilowatt hours generated. So close to making a megawatt hour for the month. Export wise, we exported an incredible 505.88 kilowatt hours, mainly because we're not charging the Kona Electric during the lockdown with this coronavirus. Import of electricity from the grid, an incredible 2.47 kilowatt hours, just 2 kilowatt hours for the entire month. I think this chart shows the um, grid import and also export really, really well, showing data from the beginning of the year where we are exporting and importing similar amounts. But as the month continues and we start to generate more electricity, we're exporting a lot more until you get to April and the blue line disappears. That's grid import and the red just goes absolutely crazy, which is the huge amount of electricity that we're actually exporting to the grid. Looking at just the last two months for grid import, you can really see the difference that we were using between two and three kilowatt hours on average, and now it's virtually disappeared. A tenth of a kilowatt hour now seems like we're using a lot of electricity. The Eddy device from My Energy heating our hot water from excess solar, that used 121 kilowatt hours, so just over four kilowatt hours a day. And charging the Kona Electric, well, basically, I've only ever plugged it in once this month, and we added 10 kilowatt hours. It's basically sat with between 60 and 80% state of charge all month. Sadly, I'm not really able to use the My Energy data from the app because it's incomplete for April. And there's some sort of fault still where when they have a fault with the servers, the data isn't recovered properly. I think this is something they've really got to get on top of because if they're thinking of releasing a home storage battery along their product line, data is really important. So they must be able to keep it and make it reliable for customers. If you've seen any of my recent videos, you'll probably already know that I'm testing a 4.8 kilowatt hour home storage battery. And that's why my import grid energy is so low this month. The app from the battery is reporting that we're using 94% of our energy from the solar panels and 6% from the battery, 0% from the grid. 
For April, we added 55 kilowatt hours of energy that would have otherwise been exported to the grid. And lo and behold, our grid usage was down 55 kilowatt hours. 57 kilowatt hours in March, just two in April. Picking out a few observations from the battery data, we can see on this chart in the blue area at the top, that's showing the state of charge of the battery for over the given period, so the minimum and maximum for each day. I'm only going into the you know, range of 60 to 70 percent really during the month, so I'm only using a small proportion of the actual battery capacity. It's a 4.8 kilowatt hour battery, only able to use 3.9 kilowatt hours, but I'm only still using the top 20, 30 percent. This next chart is showing the battery power, the power going into the battery or out of the battery. You can see towards the bottom there's a zero line, so anything below is what the battery is using to supplement the house to provide power. Anything above the zero line is where we're charging the battery. And as you can see from this graph, I'm not using very much energy to supplement the house. It's mostly covering the evening load, and that's not a very high load here either. Just a few hundred watts overnight. I've also been monitoring battery temperature, and that's because the temperature of the battery can affect the rate of charge and discharge of the battery. So to get its full usage, you need to have it at the right temperature. I've been experimenting with insulating the battery cabinet to make sure that the battery doesn't cool down too much overnight, because despite it being extremely sunny, it's actually been really cold as well. And finally, just in case you're interested, here's all the details of our configuration. If you haven't clicked like or subscribe to my videos, please do, it really helps with promoting the channel. Take care and thanks again for watching. See you again soon.